All right, guys. Today we're gonna be reacting to Flamkuchen. It's the new pizza. Nah, man, that's a real German name, man. That's crazy, right? Flamkuchen is a new pizza. I love pizza. New York pizza, one of my favorite. Oh my God, you go to Middle Manhattan or Brooklyn. Ah, oh, you walk down to a place that says 99 cents pizza. You go there. It's a cheap pizza. It's a nice flat bread. You fold it, nice cheese, and melt it. You put it in your mouth. Mm. So we're going to enjoy this video. This is from one of my subscribers. Not subscribers, but, well, members from the Discord recommended this great video. If you want to recommend more videos, make sure you visit our Discord. Be a member. Also, for donations, you can use Super Chat or links in the description for all the alternatives. Let's jump in. I'm just kidding. Of course you like pizza, but today I actually want to show you something else, namely this French-German specialty called Flammkuchen. Despite some resemblances, it's actually different from pizza in almost every possible way. And those very differences, they make Flammkuchen at the very least much, much easier to make at home, but possibly, dare I say it, more delicious than pizza. <gasps> Let me explain. The origins of Flammkuchen lie in a region called Alsace. You have Germany over there, France over here, and Alsace is sandwiched right between them. The two countries have actually been fighting and going to war over this region quite a lot, but fortunately, that is in the past. Today, the Alsace belongs to France and is a very picturesque region, combining cultural oh, influences beautiful. from both sides, right? including a very rich tradition in bread making, which might be what sparked the idea of Flammkuchen. Back in the day, people would have these huge ovens that would take quite a long time to heat up. And to test the temperature in days uh, where there were no thermometers around, what they would do is they would make these super thin and crispy uh, flatbreads from leftover dough and then top those and bake them in the oven while the rest of their bread was proofing. And the flames in the oven were too intense to bake bread anyway. And in fact, this is where Flammkuchen gets its name from because the literal translation of the name is something like Flame, flame cake. something, yeah. I Which was sounds about so perfectly to say, silly that I think yeah, I'm gonna I use the name. I was about to say flame something, wherever, right? Flame cake from now on. For most of its existence, flame cake wasn't much more than a regional specialty until the global rise of the pizza in the mid 20th century. The visual resemblance helped to oh, slowly ah, but steadily mm. popularize it as a more rustic, more localized version of the pizza. And what by now, Flammkuchen well, in Germany or Flammkuchen. Oh, technically, technically, it looks like a pizza. You see what I'm saying? It looks like a pizza. It looks like a piece of bread with things on top. That's what a pizza is. Well, you make it more Italian, more American, you put ragu sauce. That's pretty much, but it is technically a pizza. I believe, or tarte flambe in France, have become parts of their respective national cuisines. But as I mentioned before, the similarities between flame cake and pizza are actually quite superficial. First of all, the dough doesn't actually contain any yeast, which makes the texture drastically different. Instead, recipes call for just flour, salt, water, and a good glug of oil, which makes the dough easier to work with and helps with baking and crisping later on. You also won't need to let your dough rise, but you should still rest it for at least 15 minutes or so to fully hydrate the flour. That timing is so much more convenient. Like you can actually start making flame cake and then have it in front of you and eat it in under 45, maybe 40 minutes, which is simply nice. impossible with a yeasted dough like pizza. Oh, and speaking of which, no, there is no tossing or stretching the <laughs> dough involved. Relax. Because there are no yeasty bubbles to worry about in the dough, we can simply use a rolling pin to roll it out nice and thin. I like to then dust it with flour and then using the rolling pin as a coil, hey, transfer man, it onto hey, a piece of something. parchment. Shout out to the guy, man. Shout out to the guy. He, he's, the quality of the video is top notch. Shout out to the guy, man. I'm gonna leave the link in the description down below. That way you guys can show some support. At first, and then slide that onto a baking sheet. Time to add some sauce, but again, a can of San Marzano tomatoes won't get us very far here. Instead, the classic sauce here would be something along the lines of creme fraiche. And I'm saying along the lines of, because it can actually be any lacto-fermented cream. So that would include creme fraiche, sour cream, and also another product that's quite popular here in Germany called Schmand which is kind of between those two. Schmand. Schmand. I'm noticing us Germans are really not doing ourselves any favors here with the sound <laughs> of our language. 
schmunt. Anyway, no matter what type of sour cream you end up joke. using, yeah. the only thing that you really have to pay. Did not get the joke at all. Just went over my head. Let me know in the comment section what the hell he was trying to say. Attention to is that the fat content is over 20 or even better over 25%. Otherwise, uh, the cream is gonna start to separate when you add heat. Lightly cool. season the cream with salt, pepper, and freshly ground nutmeg, and then spread a layer of that there on your nuts, flame huh? cake dough. They Be generous, that, this is not as watery as tomato sauce, they so it's not that, gonna huh? make your dough soggy. When it comes to toppings, I'm gonna show you a few, but uh, first let's start with the quintessential classic Alsace flame cake. That sounds so stupid. What I really love about it is that it often features both finely sliced yellow onions, which have a very sweet note to them, as well as leeks, which have a very deep umami note. So double allium all the way. Genius. Next, we're gonna go for a dry cured ham, which is very traditional for that part of Europe. And you wanna dice that more finely than I did here because I know it is too late. I mean, it Evenly like spread the toppings on oh, your flame he, he, cake. He, he, he did a good job, man. I, that looks very good. That looks very good. I think he's being a little bit hard on himself, but look at how he just chopped out those ham. It looks very good. <laughs> and bake it at the highest temperature and the lowest rack position of your preheated oven until it's super crispy and the edges are almost burnt. I also highly recommend topping everything with finely minced chives for a fresh and sharp layer of triple allium power before indulging in this fantastically thin and crispy and hearty Ooh, flame good, cake. But lie. this was just the beginning. Now think of all the creative, delicious things you can do. For example, you can add salt, pepper, and a good dollop of horseradish to your sour cream. Then you're gonna use that as a base and top it with hot smoked salmon fillets uh, and leeks. And then after baking, you can garnish it with sprigs of fresh nice. dill oh, for a crossing. northern oh. German or almost Scandinavian touch. Or how about a veggie version? I'm gonna add some grated garlic and a tiny squeeze of sriracha to the sour cream and then we're topping with sweet yellow onions, grated Gruyere cheese, diced king oyster mushrooms and a handful of fresh spinach leaves. Yeah. This one ranks extremely high for me. I think a bit of cheese really elevates this whole thing. It's starting to look, it does, it does look kind of a cheap version of the pizza. You see what I'm saying? But it's still a pizza. Like, if you have a couple friends, you come over, you want to make a pizza, but you don't want to make a pizza that takes you like five hours. Hey, you do this, man. That's This is this is a game changer. Situation. But hey, I think after making three flame cakes, the only way we can have another one is to make it a dessert, which is not a problem. To the sour cream, we're adding a good squeeze of honey, a few drops of vanilla extract, and some cinnamon. We're gonna top all of that with slices of apple sense. and pear, which you can optionally sprinkle yes. with a bit of sugar. It makes sense because of the dough. It makes sense. Yeah, that's a good, that, actually, that's very good. You know, this variety is super special, yeah. and it's also just really, really good. It's like a crispy apple pie. Yes, yeah. I said it. So next time, instead of pizza night, how about you try flame cake night? <laughs> yeah, he's very good though. He's right. I mean, that kind of dough, it, it does work very well with those combinations. Man, that's very good. I need to get out of my shell, shell a little bit and just try some of that stuff, man. That is very good. I'm not going to lie. I was a little bit skeptical in the beginning. However, as soon as he start putting things together, it makes sense. The fl flam cushion it makes sense. A lot of things. It's a cheap, it's a, not a cheaper version of the pizza and let me just take that back but more a simple version of having those pizza craving controlled but let me know what you guys see in the comment section below do you guys do flam cushion do you guys sell a lot of flam cushion in germany because it's right there in the middle of that transitional area between france and germany i would like to hear you guys opinion i'll see you in the next one